Welcome along lady and gentlemen. Today I've got my hands on the 2021 Triumph Speed Twin. Now I rode this bike last year, the original Speed Twin. This has had a few updates. Basically the bike needed a bit of an update for Euro 5. They had to do some work on the engine. So Triumph thought, hang on a minute, let's take this opportunity to give it a slight reworking. Fantastic as it was, they've tried to make it better. So we've got different engine internals, different cams, lighter crank, forged pistons. We have Marzocchi upside down forks now, as opposed to the conventional way up forks with the gaiters. And we have M50 calipers and some other changes, which we will talk about in a moment. But today we're gonna go out for a little bit of a raz, sorry, sorry, not a raz, a gentle meander through the countryside because this bike is a retro this bike is for going a little bit easier enjoying the scenery so grab yourself a cuppa make yourself comfortable let's get started chopsy roll the intro <laughs> So before we set off, let's do a quick sound check on this machine. This is a, a twin, a 1200cc twin. Two great big honking exhausts down the side. Let's have a little listen. Sounds decent. Jeez. <laughs> Every time I ride a speed twin, I forget how grunty that engine is. It, it takes you by surprise. If you give it full throttle at first gear, hold on tight, because you could be off the back. It's a very, very grunty motor. For 2021, as I mentioned, Triumph have worked their magic on this engine. It needed a bit of an update to meet Euro 5. So what they've done, they've put high compression pistons in, they've changed the cams, they've lightened the crank, all that equates to another three horsepower over the old bike. So it's now 99 horsepower. So that sweet spot of 100 brake horsepower. But the big news really, rather than the three brake horsepower, is the torque. The torque figure is the same at 112 newton meters, but it's a thousand revs lower down the rev range. So you've got that torque available lower down the rev range, meaning you don't have to to thrash the bike to get the performance. And the Speed Twin was never a bike you had to thrash to get the performance anyway. The power is instant. Jumping on this, the biggest surprise is how smooth it is. It's not the torque, it's not the power, it's just how smooth that engine is. A 1200cc triple it's, it's a cross-plane design, so it's a cross-plane type crank, you know, with a strange firing order to give it extra grunt. But it is so smooth. I don't remember the old version being as silky smooth as this. There's almost zero vibrations. For a twin, a 1200 twin, there's hardly any vibrations at all. I'm really impressed with how smooth this is. And the gearbox is just delicious. It goes into gear so easily, up and down the box. It's super smooth to ride. You just feel like you can sit back, it takes no concentration, and just really enjoy the ride, you know. Unlike the Kawasaki Z900 RS I rode a little while ago, which was quite a snatchy throttle response. This is the complete opposite. It's just delightful. It's fueled beautifully. So that's the first thing, just how goddamn smooth this engine is. Absolutely lovely. So for 2021, all the changes to the Speed Twin are all about performance. You know, they're all performance orientated changes. The new brakes up front, the new, sh the new upside down forks, 43 millimeter upside down Marzocchi forks, non-adjustable by the way, but they always were. The rear shocks, I think they've just played with the preload a little bit. One of the criticisms of the old bike, well, it was the rear shocks weren't great. First impressions of this, it still could be that they're not absolutely fantastic. They're still a little bit soft, but I am a 20 stone fatty. You know, I, I'm, I'm a good five or six stone and heavier than your average rider. So any issues with not enough preload or a soft rear shock are gonna be really emphasized when it's lugging a fatty around. Too many pasties and fish suppers. They've put on the M50 calipers. Let's have a quick test. 
yeah, they're, they're good, but they don't stand out as being amazing. I think what they've done, you know, they, they did, I guess they didn't want the brakes to be too sharp on this bike, so I think they've got quite a soft pad material in there. It's not too aggressive. There's plenty of power there, but you have got to pull the lever a little bit. I guess that's just to add to the, the smoothness of the ride. They don't want really grabby brakes, like on the, you know, the street triple, just there the brakes. They're a little bit softer than that. I can live with that. The rear bike is very, very good still, because I think this is still going to be the sort of bike that when you're going through a set of twisties, you know, you're using the rear brake to set the bike up before you go into the turns. I think that's still going to be the case. Yep, I would say it is first twisty and yeah, it's got some nice feedback. It feels a little bit soft, you know, you're not, I'm not getting inundated with feedback from the road, but again, it's not what this bike is about. This bike is about being smooth, you know, enjoying the ride, but if you do want to get on it, it can deliver. The Ergos are exactly the same as last year's bike. It's got a nice high bar. The seat is quite big, but I don't think it's massively well padded. I've been on this for about 15 minutes and, you know, I could tell if I was to spend a few hours on here, it may not be the most comfortable seat ever. The feet, because I'm a big tool bugger, because I'm six foot two, and this is quite a low bike, the foot pegs actually feel quite high and you know my legs are at quite an acute angle the pegs are quite high because it's such a low machine so i think perhaps if you're over six foot you know you, you may find this bike a little bit cramped in the leg department plenty of room with the bars you know fairly wide very spacious up top but a little bit cramped in the leg if you're tally rain go go just do one do one rain See the fueling around town, we're doing just under 30 miles an hour, 2,000 revs, it's not snatchy, it's perfect. I mean, it's, it's a massive 1200 V twin, v twin a, a parallel twin, and it's still, you know, it's not even got too much engine braking. You'd imagine it'd have a bit of engine braking, it's just got a nice amount of engine braking. It, it's got perfect manners around town, super easy to ride, super smooth, and then so much grunt so much grunt there more grunt than you'd ever need and just silky smooth grunt as well i can't believe how smooth this motor is and also how smooth the gearbox is i do not remember the old bike being as smooth as this right twisty bits let's give it a little 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 feather around the twisties here to see exactly what it's like I mean, it's a little bit slow to turn in. I mean, it's not a sporty feeling as the Thruxton RS, I would say. And the front brakes, they're there, but you do have to give them a tug, as I mentioned. But, you know, it's pleasant around the twisties. You can get your twisty fix nicely on this. I don't, I think, I think the Kawasaki Z900 RS is slightly more sporty feeling to ride around the twisties. What let that bike down was the tyres weren't great. So this has got better tyres, but I think the overall suspension is a little bit more sporty on the 900 RS. Yeah, it's very nice actually. It is very, very nice. It's perfect. I mean, it's, it's the perfect balance of sportiness and comfort. You know, you don't want to sacrifice your ride too much when you just want to cruise around because you know, this is a retro it's not for thrashing around the twisties but it can do it you know it can give you that thrill that feedback when you want it I, I would say this setup is absolutely perfect for the type of bike this is what we will do just because we can we'll take it up the hill climb road just because we're here we may as well is it damp could be a little bit damp could be a little bit damp So grunty, so grunty. It gets a little bit more vibey as the revs increase. Yeah, we've got a bit of a few wet patches. Let's be a little bit careful here. So much pull in a higher gear. We've got a dry line. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's very nice actually. I don't know if you would find the limits of ground clearance. But 
Like it is actually very nice. Lovely feedback from those tyres. It feels like you've got plenty of grip. It lays it down into the corners pretty easily. I think it's about 112 kilos wet, this. So, you know, it's not super light, but it's not super heavy either. And it makes it agile enough. I mean, the front end feels like the wheel is in front of you a little bit. I mean, it doesn't change direction massively quick. You're not, you know, it's not on its nose, but it's nice. You know, as I said, perfect for the type of riding you want to do on this bike. Get to a bit of twisty road like that and you might surprise a few people with what this bike can deliver. So there she is, the 2021 Speed Twin. Now I dare you to disagree that that is a good looking motorcycle. It looks exactly what you want it to be, isn't it? A retro sports machine. <laughs> I do love the look of it. It looks very, very good. One other thing they've changed for this year which I'm not so sure about. They've changed the wheels. The wheel design is different. I actually liked the old wheel design a bit more than this, to be fair, but you know, it's, it's, it's not horrendous. They're just spoke, you know, that one's had more of a, looked a bit like the BMW carbon wheels. You know, I preferred the design of a, I think they were a nine spoke before, now they're like a multi-spoke. Another thing which is amazing with these, uh, these exhaust systems on, which, which is the same on the Thruxton, you know, they look like they're straight through pipes, but there's actually a cat underneath the bike. You know, but it looks like you've just got a couple of straight through pipes, a couple of straight through bangers, but uh, they do actually have a cat in there. But for the look, it looks incredible. Here we have the M50 Brembos. I think really it's, it's more of a look thing. They look better and more sporty than the old bikes, but with the pads they're using, I don't think the braking performance is any, any different to the old bike. The Marzocchi 43mm Marzocchi forks. They look much better, don't they, in an upside down design. You know, with that other ones had like the conventional way up forks with gaiters. I think these look much sportier. Here is that reworked engine, different internals, higher compression, different cam, forged pistons, three brake horsepower more, and maximum torque thousand revs lower down the rev range yeah the rear shocks are set on the lowest preload setting um, if I had a tool I would wind those around because they certainly need a bit more preload for a 20 stone fatty Metzler Racetech tires they are a, a sporty tire these but it gives you confidence in the corners it gives you confidence that it's going to grip when you're laying it down so I'm never going to argue that a tyre is too sporty on any bike. Those delightful clocks, look at them, a couple of Swiss watches, absolutely lovely clocks these aren't they and you've got little LCDs there as well just to give you information you know fuel gauge etc, miles till empty, trip or time, you know simple, retro, beautiful. Switch gear is also of a decent quality, a nice feel to all the buttons indicators you know nothing wrong with that only slight surprise is it's not got an led headlight it's a conventional halogen bulb in there which i'm really rather surprised about it's got a, i think it's got leds around the side and stuff but the main headlight is is halogen led indicators though so there we go the 2021 speed twin let's jump back on practical things i suppose we should mention practical things the mirrors the bar end mirrors are absolutely excellent i can see everything behind me no vibrations in those mirrors absolutely brilliant triumph have really cracked the bar end mirror haven't they absolutely fantastic a fuel gauge with a countdown till empty you've got different modes it's in sport mode at the moment seems we have some different modes let's have a look at the different modes rain road or sport and that response was so nice in in the uh, in the sport mode, what's the road going to be like? This is road mode. <laughs> I don't think you need it. I think the sport is fine. It's a little bit softer maybe, but it was absolutely fine in sport. I think it's one of those bikes whereby you just leave it in sport all the time. There's no need to play with it. Let me show you the grunt this bike's got. 30 miles an hour, fourth gear, just under 2,000 revs. Power, 60 miles an hour, 
So even under 2,000 revs, you've got drivable torque there. That's why it's so easy to ride. There's just power so low down the rev range. To be honest, I don't think there's any point thrashing it past 5,000 revs. As the revs go up, the vibes do increase. Now this bike is made to be ridden lower down the rev range. You know, it's, it's a bike to pull you through the corners as opposed to be revving through the corners. And I guess, again, that's a slight difference with the Kawasaki 900 RS. That's more of a rever. You know, that's a straight four. That loves the revs. So this loves the torque, this loves the drive. So keep this in a higher gear and pull you through the corners as opposed to rev rev out through the corners like on the, uh, the quack. So I guess it's a different way of riding your retro sporties. For me, I think I'll take the grunt. I think I'll take the grunt over the revs. I think it serves more use for overtake. It makes more of a lazier ride. And I think this sort of retro, I want to be a bit lazy. I just want to ride between calves, between donut shops. <laughs> I want to be lazy, I want to enjoy the scenery, but I want a bit of sportiness there if the mood takes me. When all those donuts, I've got a sugar rush on from all the donuts, I can then go on the gas, throw it down in the corners. But yeah, give me the give me the grunt over the revs any day. There's no quick shifter or blipper. You wouldn't expect it, would you, on a retro bike? I think that would uh, sort of ruin it to a degree. You want to use the clutch, you want to use the gearbox, which is very, very nice. If that isn't nice, if it's clunky, then it's a bit of an issue, isn't it? But it's super smooth on this. Down a couple of gears, no problem at all. Afternoon, sir. Give it a little bit in the corners. Yeah, rev it past five and it's a little bit of a pointless exercise. You just get more revs and vibrant, well, more revs, obviously, you just get more vibration there. More to the point. But yeah, overall, quite surprising in those twisties actually. <laughs> Slightly better than I thought it was going to be. Does it wheelie is, the, I guess, the important point. <laughs> yeah, it does! It does! The traction was kicking in then, but that guy <laughs> actually came up a little bit. <laughs> Love it. I'm actually going to be borrowing the BMW R9T next weekend. <laughs> Believe it or not, I've never ridden an R9T. As we're getting a bit retro-y, I thought I better get my ass on an R9T and then I would have tested, you know, the top three retros really, you know, sports retros. I don't know what version of the R9T it is I'm collecting because as you know, there's hundreds of them, but it's an R9T. So there, I will be doing a review of the R9T and I'll let you know how it compares to the Speed Twin. What I'm going to try and pull off, if I can, is me and Greg, oh blimey, the sun's out. Me and Greg are going to do a comparison review between this and the R9T, if the stars align and the weather behaves itself. Because we've got three days when we've got both the bikes overlapping, because this has to go back. So if the weather's decent, if we can pull it off, there may be a comparison between the Speed Twin and the R9T coming your way. So. Watch this space. If I was looking to get a retro, I think this is my favorite retro I've tried so far. I loved it when I rode it last year. It's only better now. It's definitely better. If you have the old version, I wouldn't say it's worth updating to this one. You know, it's small changes, small steps forward. The engine is impressive though, I have to say. But I would go and test ride one and see if you think the engine is smooth enough to warrant, you know, going up and uh, upgrading. But I probably don't think so, but it's just moved the bike on. It is a little bit more expensive. Super Duke. It's a little bit more expensive than the, the old model. This is now a, starts at 11,000. The old bike was 300 pound cheaper, but a 300 pound increase, Brembo calipers, new foot, I don't think that's too bad. I think this paint version is also a little bit extra. I think it's the base black one, which is 11,000. I actually quite like the look of the black one. This is, I think, a little bit more. Not much, but a little bit more. And then, of course, you can customise and, and throw additional extras at it, you know, as you do on the Triumph. There's so, the options catalogue is huge, what you can put on these bikes. But 11,000 on the road for the base model is very sensible money. And I think the fit and finish and quality of the bike is incredible. So was the Kawasaki saying that, but it's equally as good. 
so there we go guys thanks very much for watching as always i do appreciate your support and viewing of my videos much appreciated i'll be back with some more retro soon and other stuff of course it's not all retro this isn't the retro channel there'll be other stuff on the horizon so thanks for watching guys as always your support is appreciated please subscribe if you've enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next video cheers guys power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>